Well, it's very unlike any other memorial in Washington and, and really like any other memorial in the world, as far as I know. Its defining feature is an enormous long metal tapestry. If you're expecting a memorial with a kind of Roman or Greek facade, a temple-like appearance, a lot of marble, this is not that. This is more like a park that's been defined in a very hard, problematic urban space that adds some greenery to um, a part of the city that people don't much love. And it is about Eisenhower, but really it's more about a kind of generosity of public space. I like this memorial a lot because it comes to the emotional core of its message, kind of through the sides, through roundabout ways. You know, one of the striking things and one of the most controversial things about the memorial was the idea of including this figure of a boy, Eisenhower, in it, a kind of spectator of the man's career. And that's taken on a number of different meanings and in some ways purposes over the time. In, in one of the early iterations of the memorial, this figure of a boy sat sort of in between Ike, the, the general who won the, the European campaign and Ike, the president who led the free world. And he seemed to be sort of looking out, looking out at his options, pondering his future. In the course of the design, that little statue got moved to the side. So now it looks on kind of from a distance and in many ways, a lot of things changed about its message. Now, it looks almost to be a memory that Eisenhower the adult is having of his past, as if this part of childhood is never quite erased. It's always with us, but it's been pushed far to the sides of consciousness because, of course, this was a busy, important man, and child at this point is quite remote. I find that really rather touching and a message that's not been incorporated into any other memorial that I can think of. We move back now along Independence Avenue so we can get a full view of the most distinctive feature of the Eisenhower Memorial, which is this massive tapestry. This tapestry consists of 600 panels of woven stainless steel cable representing a design, which in this case is Pointe de Hoc in Normandy, France. Originally, Gary's image for this was a landscape from Kansas. But as the design evolved, the image on the tapestry evolved as well. We took some photos with a drone of the Normandy coastline, but they didn't actually translate to this medium very well. So Frank Gehry sat down and he drew it and he sketched it out. And this sketch is in fact what's represented on the tapestry. Each panel has some small fine wire, three layers of it in different directions. And then on top of that is an art wire, a thicker, heavier art wire, sometimes as many as six layers, which creates the design. If you go to the website, eisenhowermemorial.gov, there's an interview with Thomas Osinski, who was the man who came up with the methodology to create this and mass produce these panels. Our very first sample took three months to produce. So obviously we couldn't make 600 panels if each one took three months. And Thomas was the one that figured it out. So let's walk a little bit closer to it and you can see the design as we get closer. The whole tapestry is underlit at, at night and it comes on about dusk. And it, as you can see, it's sort of the, the wires just kind of glow and one of the really interesting things about this tapestry is it looks different no matter at every time of day when you come here. If it's a sunny day, if it's an overcast day, sometimes it just serves as a screen between the Department of Education and the memorial. You can't really tell the design. And other times the sun glints off it. So it's, every time you visit this memorial, you'll see something different on that tapestry.